DW Radio, your information station. Hello, everybody, and welcome to WDW Radio Live. I am Lou Mangello, and this is the WDW Newscast for Wednesday, March 12th, 2014. I am here to help you have the best possible Disney vacation experience and bring you a little bit of Disney magic wherever you are with this live video broadcast every Wednesday right here at WDW Radio Live. Also, over at www.radio.com, you can find my podcast, videos, uh, Walt Disney World trivia books, my CDs, mobile apps, newsletter, live events, and lots more. And also, don't forget about my brand new project, 102 Ways to Save Money for and at Walt Disney World. It is, And I have a special announcement for you who are listening or watching tonight. It is actually live in the Kindle store and on Amazon.com for the print version. And I promise you that not only are you going to enjoy reading the book and looking at it, but you are going to have the vacation you envision for your family or yourself at a rate more affordable than you think. In fact, I even guarantee it. I guarantee it. It's filled with tips, tools, advice, links to relevant websites and anecdotes and trivia, beautiful images as well. And whether you're going for the first time or you've been there hundreds, uh, you're guaranteed to have a more budget-friendly experience. Plus, there's more, 40 free things to enjoy, do, eat, eat, and collect. Again, you can learn more and you can download it now by visiting Disney102.com. So let's get into... This week's Walt Disney World news. Uh, as you know, I live in Florida. Uh, I am an annual pass holder. I am a, a proud card-carrying annual pass holder. And if you are too, chances are you've been waiting for something for some time now. Well, you'll be happy to know that Disney has started inviting its annual pass holders to sign up for its My Magic Plus reservation system, finally meaning that the long-awaited Magic Bands are going to start getting mailed out to annual pass holders' home. You know, obviously, the bands are available in a choice of colors, and they're customizable. A lot of little add-on accessories you can do as well, too, to really sort of make them your own. They are the key, literally, to the FastPass Plus system that allows you to secure times at attractions, rides, shows, and parades. We'll talk about a parade in a little bit. In advance, obviously, guests who've been staying at Walt Disney World Resorts have been part of the Magic Band testing, and it's important to note it is still in a testing phase for months, and now, and over the next few weeks, uh, those bands are going to start to get mailed out to annual pass holders' homes. There are some things that differentiate the annual pass holder magic bands in terms of what you can do versus a guest. So there are some restrictions, if you want to look at them that way. One, you can now plan seven days of Fast Pass Plus selections within a 30-day period. Now, those days do not have to be consecutive. So if you're going to go you know, every Saturday and Sunday over a 30-day period, you can schedule up to seven days in that time. You are limited uh, to three Fast Pass Plus attractions per day. Again, this is still sort of in a testing phase. Uh, a day's worth of Fast Pass Plus attractions all still need to be in the same park. So you can't have one Fast Pass for Magic Kingdom, two for Epcot. All have to be in the same uh, in the same park. And of course, like I said, you can make those selections up to thirty days in advance. You can make some selections and alterations at the theme park, but availability could be limited. Um, and unlike Walt Disney World Hotel guests, you are not going to be able to charge purchases onto your Magic Bands at this time. Uh, and you also you don't get that 60-day window like guests uh, have as well, too. Again, shipping of the bands is going to start in mid-March, and they could take about 7 to 10 days for those to arrive in your mailboxes. So uh, looking forward, I know a lot of people who are annual pass holders have been waiting for it. I think this was done uh, definitely intentionally. They wanted to really work out some of the kinks and operational uh, things that are going to go with with launching something new like this, rather than give it to its most loyal, dedicated, and uh, obviously the people who visit the most and maybe sort of um, you know overly critical of it as they're starting to work out some of those kinks. I think they did a lot of testing. They're now going to start the testing with the annual pass holders. And I think again, I've said for a long time, I think what we're seeing now with My Magic Plus and the Magic Bands is the literal tip of the iceberg in terms of what this technology is going to be and what it's going to bring in terms of the personalization of our theme park experiences. Think back at some point to March of 2014 when you got your first Magic Band and how that probably is going to change and continue to improve over the next year, three, five, seven years, etc. So speaking of uh, reservations, there is a new thing that you can get reservations for because there's a new after dark experience 
for Epcot guests that brings them a little bit more fun during the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival. So after a full day enjoying all the flowers and the food and the food and the flowers, the new Illuminations Sparkling Dessert Party is going to let guests sample decadent desserts from around the world paired with international sparkling wines in a very intimate and exclusive environment all while you get to enjoy Illuminations Reflections of Earth. Refle- uh, reservations uh, b- will begin today, actually, and the first Illumination Sparkling Dessert Party is going to be on March 15th. The days will be only Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. They run from 9, 7.45 to 9.20. The location for the reserve viewing area is called Showcase Plaza. Many of you have probably seen it, wish you can go there. It's often re- reserved for private events and, and private groups. It is that special area right sort of across the lagoon from the American Adventure Pavilion as you cross over the bridge from Future World. The price, which includes tax and gratuity, is $49 for adults, $29 for children. And the menu, which is, of course, subject to change, includes tiramisu from Italy, uh, vanilla pot de creme from France, shortbread cookies from the UK, baklava from Morocco, sugar-dusted cronies with strawberry sauce and whipped cream. It's from the American Adventure. I've lived in America all my life, and I have no idea what a crony is, sugar-dusted or not. Uh, There's also going to be a lot of ice cream novelties from the Disney parks, lemonade, coffee, coffee and tea, sparkling wine from Washington State, and Prosecco from Italy. Nice. You can call 407-WDW-PLAY to book, or you can visit... um, the Disney Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival for more information. So let's go from food to trying to work off all the food and the Prosecco because we know how popular run Disney events are, right? We're talking already about the Avengers uh, race coming up in Disneyland this November. Well, if you thought they were popular, get this. The 2014 Wine and Dine Half Marathon sold out in just over 24 hours last week. Now, that's surprising to a lot of people because last year it took weeks for it to sell out. There is still room uh, for the Jingle Jungle 5K and the Run Disney Kids races. Obviously, you can go and visit rundisney.com for more information. But just to sort of punctuate just how popular these races have become and people's desire for something else and something even more, Disney Sports last week announced a new event called the Disney Fit Challenge. It is a three-day competitive fitness exen- event. I am exhausted just thinking about it. Not a lot of details have been re- re- released as yet, but it is scheduled for September 26th through the 28th, 2014. And Disney did say that athletes of all levels can compete against others of similar age and skill levels. So you will not be competing against the Iron Man people if you are not an Iron. I am not the Iron Man guy, not Iron Man the Avenger. I mean, Iron Man, like triathlon kind of things. You'll be competing against people of similar age and skill level. You'll earn points in the first two days of competition. That'll determine what finalists get to compete on day three. Very curious to see what more this event is going to have to it and who maybe from you in the audience is planning on signing up for the new Disney Fit Challenge. So something new is coming, but we always hate to hear about some of our favorite things going away, even in the for, to, to make way for the pro, for progress and new addition. And in downtown Disney, the complex housing Baby Cakes NYC, Pollo Comparo, and Bodie's All-American is scheduled to close Wednesday, March 19th, as construction of Disney Springs continues. I liked Pollo Comparo a lot. I liked the food there. It was very fresh, had some great salads and chickens, but many... Many people, judging by the tweets and the posts and the emails I got, are very sad at the loss of Baby Cakes NYC. They're obviously known for their gluten-free, vegan, baked goods. I can see it now. I can see the hoarding like Twinkies, right? When Hostess was discontinuing Twinkies, people flocked to Publix and hoarded Twinkies. You don't have to worry. There are going to be some, not all, Baby Cakes products still being sold at some of the Disney-operated outlets. You might find them in some of the... um, uh, resort marketplaces, like in the re- in the refrigerated section, so they will have some baby cake goods. Don't worry. And I still believe that they may be available for special order. Not sure. I will get some more details as uh, as this progresses. But again, March nineteenth. If you're a baby cakes fan, get in there and uh, and stock up soon. We're gonna be sad to see them go. Love the people over at Baby Cakes. But this past week, the new Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade 
debuted at the Magic Kingdom on Sunday. It is the first really new parade for the Magic Kingdom. Going back to 2001, right? This replaces Celebrate a Dream Come True, the third version of the Share a Dream Come True parade that was introduced back in 2001 as part of the anniversary celebration. There are seven new floats, almost 100 performers. I've seen it. Once so far, and I say once very importantly because I need to see it again and again and again from different vantage points. In one word, if I have to describe this parade in a single word, and I don't think you can, it is spectacular. There is so much detail. There is so much to see. The costumes are just so vibrant and beautiful. The the music is just wonderful. It's charming. It's whimsical. And yes, in some places, it, it is truly magical you're going to be very surprised at what and who you see along there obviously i think the big highlight for a lot of people really is this steampunk inspired 53 foot long 26 foot tall it's huge by the way maleficent dragon that literally breathes fire it is breathtaking to watch this articulated dragon go by um you really going to want to see this parade over and over again it's currently presented once per day. There is Fast Pass Plus reservations that you can get for it, and you might want to try that if you, well, now, especially as annual pass holders, you can do that as well, too. Uh, lots of buzz on Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and just about anywhere that people can post their pictures. I really don't remember um, people responding to a new parade the way they are a festival of, of fantasy. So what about you? Have you seen it? If so, what do you think? And if you've seen the video... I can tell you it doesn't count. There is no way it can possibly convey what it is like to see and, and feel this parade in person. Again, the musical cues and the costumes and, and the kinetic energy and the surprises that you get. And the more you see it, I think, the more you're going to pick up, including hints and some old remnants from Spectral Magic. Uh, it really sort of harkens back to those original Magic Kingdom parades, that sense of nostalgia and sense of what those, that sort of the majesty of those parades but it's very new. It's very hip. I love the music from this parade. The one thing I've heard all the time is, when is Disney going to start to sell the soundtrack? Because it's that good. They want it that bad. So um, I think this parade is really, really, really going to do very well. And again, I think it's a parade you need to see from the train station, from the road, you know, by the Rose Garden, from the hub, by from Frontierland, because I think where you see it and how you see it is really going to change uh, your parade experience. But I want to know if you've seen it what do you think about it? Leave your response in the comments section below or in the comments section over at www.radio.com. While you're there, also be sure and check out our events page. Lots of events coming up, not just in Walt Disney World, but around the country. Our next meet of the month is going to be Saturday, March 22nd for breakfast and a Muppet movie. We're going to have breakfast at Earl's Sandwich then make our way over to see Muppets Most Wanted. Then our next On the Road event is going to be Saturday, April 5th in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Again, you can get details about all these events and more coming up, including our cruise on the Disney Dream and our pre-cruise event extravaganza. I don't know what really to call it because we haven't revealed details yet. But again, to find out more about the cruise, you can also visit mousefantravel.com. Get a free, no obligation quote for the cruise, for your stay before, or some of the special events we're going to be doing throughout the year as well. Uh, that is going to do it for this week's show. Please make sure you come back and visit again next week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right here at WDW Radio Live. I want to thank you guys so very much for taking time out of your Wednesday night to watch. I'm Lou Mangello. Have a great week, everybody. See ya. See ya.